We talked about some of her concerns with overcapacity and potentially Chinese dumping. We, she also had conversations with Chinese leadership about TikTok and that bill that's going through Congress that President Biden did say he would sign if it passes the Senate. I asked the Treasury Secretary how those conversations went with the Chinese and whether they were concerned. I think this is an important and profitable uh, company, and I think they're concerned by the prospect that they would be um, forced out of the United States, or what the legislation really requires is that they would uh, sell the company um, to yeah. a domestic purchaser. So um, I think they certainly have concerns about that. Do you think the Chinese government will allow the U.S. assets sold to U.S. investors or U.S. company? I honestly don't want to get, to get ahead of where we are on this. Um, the president has said he would sign the House legislation. You also brought up matters of national security on this trip and said that there would be consequences for China if they increase support militarily for Russia. And we also heard this week reportedly from Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, who said that that was happening on a large scale. So are we looking at sanctions on Chinese companies? Well, it's not only Chinese companies. We would feel that any, particularly any financial institution that facilitated um, trade in dual-use goods or strictly military goods in violation of our sanctions and aiding Russia's military, um, we would consider sanctioning. The president issued a recent executive order that would enable Treasury to impose sanctions on financial institutions that are found to be doing this in a systematic way. And we've not used this tool yet, but it is one that would be available. And what I've tried to make clear is that um, we stand ready to act if we see significant violations by, especially by financial institutions. Um, in China? That, well, and other countries as well. What about the Chinese government and its support of Russia? Well, China is entitled to have a relationship with Russia. What we have made clear is that it is unacceptable to us for China to support Russia militarily. And that's... Uh, doesn't say that China can't have a relationship with Russia. Uh, China and Russia do a lot of trade. Much of it is unproblematic. But anything that involves aiding Russia's military in their brutal war against Ukraine is unacceptable to us, and um, we have the ability to sanction it. We've also seen increasingly close economic ties between China and Iran. And especially now with Iran increasing threats against Israel, I do wonder how concerned you are and American businesses should be about this. Well, we have very strong sanctions in place against Iran. And when we encounter ongoing violations, we've had a number of sanctions, actions that have tried to address that. That's a, an area of great concern. But just in terms of China's relationship, China's relationship with Russia, with Iran, is that a matter that U.S. businesses, who do a lot of business in China, should be concerned about? To the extent that it creates a national security risk for us, it is something we stand ready to address. Should American companies be reducing their exposure to China on a manufacturing basis? Look, I, I think um, trade and investment between China and the United States is valuable. Many American companies are doing excellent business in China, have been here for a long time. The same is true of Chinese companies in the United States. And this trade is beneficial. And the great majority of it is uncontroversial. And I think we should not do anything to impede that trading and investment relationship. But in areas where we have 
national security concerns, as we have clearly demonstrated, we stand ready to act to protect our national security. That may mean export controls or other, other interventions. And we try to target those narrowly so that they don't have broad-based impact on China's economy uh, as a whole. And we feel strongly and have agreed with the Chinese mm -hmm. that we need a level playing field. Now, when we interfere, when we have regulations um, that affect our trade and investment with China, if it's national security or other reasons, we go through an open and transparent rule writing process. We put out proposed regulations, we accept comments. The Chinese have the opportunity to comment. We take the input and we write regulations. It's very clear what we're doing. In China's case, often the support, we believe there's maybe often a lot of support in ways that are not transparent. And that really is a, a, a meaningful difference. But we're not trying to stifle trade and investment broadly speaking, so I would not want to advise American firms don't do business in China. But if I'm Tim Cook of Apple and looking at the geopolitical relationship and the national security concerns, ultimately won't that trump the economic relationship? Well, the purpose of the dialogue that I've been involved with now for well over a year uh, with our Chinese counterparts is intended to make sure that that does not happen that we don't have an unintended escalation of tensions, that we understand one another's red lines, we avoid misunderstandings, and we preserve um, economic interactions that are beneficial to both sides. We manage our relationship. We need to manage it responsibly so that both sides can continue to benefit. You've put a lot of work into this, and, and you said in your news conference this afternoon that the relationship is in a better place than it was a year ago. Definitely. Do you worry about the relationship in one year from now if President Trump gets reelected? Look, I don't want to get into politics. Um, I'm governed by the Hatch Act. I um, feel President Biden and President Xi directed um, myself and the Vice Premier, He Le Feng, to work toward a better, more stable, predictable relationship with one another, to stabilize our relationship, to try to manage our differences, create better channels of communication, and importantly, work together on many things where we can both make contributions um, that are important to the globe, whether it's dealing with climate change, or um, other issues, public health issues, uh, debt issues of low-income countries. And that's what, we're, that's what we're trying to do. We have greatly deepened our relationships, and um, I feel our relationship in this economic sphere is in a much better place. Well, one thing that's helped the dynamic is the U.S. is coming with a strong hand right now on mm -hmm. our economy. I think we can feel great about our economy. I was going to There's ask you what you made of this last jobs report. Well, it just shows that U.S. is firing on all cylinders. I mean, in terms of short-term performance, inflation is coming down. The job market is very strong. Growth has um, really been a lot stronger than I would have expected at this at this stage, we had 3.1 percent growth last year. Inflation's coming down. Um, labor supply is up, and um, we're seeing some of the pressures we, we might worry about coming from the labor market impacting inflation. They're subsiding, but unemployment remains very low. You're still confident we can get to 2 percent this year? We've seen a little bit of a flare-up so far this year. Well, I think it will continue to come down over time. That's my expectation. and. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that we, we can certainly get into the twos. And recovery stays intact with or without Fed rate cuts? So I'm not going to make a <laughs> forecast on Fed rate cuts. Um, the Fed has indicated that um, they want to make sure that inflation's really coming down 
and that they're obviously considering rate cuts that would be appropriate when they reach that judgment. And we've had generally good news on inflation. Um, you know, let's look at the data. I believe inflation will continue to come down. Yeah, and I guess I'm just wondering if the economy continues to hold up, no matter what happens on the Fed. I think we've got a good, strong economy. We've got very strong domestic demand. Um, consumers are holding up. Some low-income consumers um, are perhaps exhausting their buffers of saving that they built up during the pandemic. We're seeing a little bit more distress at the household level there. But generally, households are in very good financial sh shape. Our financial system is generally quite strong. Um, I don't, things can always happen. There's always recession risk. Geopolitical developments could um, create risk to our economy. But I think we've got a good, strong economy that's on a solid track.